So how is fatty acid synthesis controlled? Well, the rate limiting step is the production of malonyl-CoA. Now what happens is this biotin carrier protein uh, combines with bicarbonate and using ATP we get this uh, carboxylic group or CO2 group. Then acetyl-CoA is combined with this uh, CO2 group and uh, melanyl-CoA is formed. That's carried out by the enzyme acetyl-CoA carboxylase. There are several things that either inhibit or activate acetyl-CoA carboxylase or ACC. So the end product is palmityl-CoA or palmitic acid. So the end product will feed back and decrease the activity, whereas uh, citrate, well, citrate is what carries the acetyl-CoA out of the mitochondria. So saying, hey, I have a lot of two carbon molecules that I can donate, that will increase the activity. On the other hand, AMP activated protein kinase. So AMP is the cell's internal signal that says, hey, I'm low on energy. And so when we're low on energy, this protein kinase gets activated and it will phosphorylate the acetyl-CoA carboxylase, which will uh, deactivate it or inhibit it. On the other hand, so glucagon uh, will activate protein kinase A, which will do the same thing. So glucagon is the whole is the body's whole mechanism of saying, "Hey, I'm starving." And when you're starving, you don't want to produce fats; you want to use fats. On the other hand, insulin is your whole body's way of saying, "Hey, I, I'm completely well fed." And so, if you're well fed, you don't want to break down fats; you want to store the extra energy as fats. And so, uh, protein phosphorylase will. Uh, dephosphorylate the acetyl-CoA carboxylase and activate it so that it can produce uh, fatty acids. So palmityl-CoA will feed back and downregulate the activity of ACC. And but, however, as palmityl-CoA is uh, stored as a triacylglycerol to be exported or as it's used up in another fatty acid pathway, uh, the, it lowers the concentrations of palmityl-CoA and so that uh, feedback uh, decreases. On the other hand, citrate, uh, citrate and palmityl-CoA uh, kind of counter each other and balance each other out. So high citrate will upregulate uh, ACC. Just as I said before, uh, AMP activated protein kinase uh, will phosphorylate um, the acetyl CoA carboxylase, the ACC, and downregulate it. And phosphatase from insulin will upregulate it. And then again, protein kinase will downregulate it. So I really hate slides like this where they're all just words, but I'll go ahead and go through it really quick. Fatty acid synthesis and degradation, so building fatty acids and breaking them down, are reciprocally regulated through the two main enzymes of acetyl-CoA carboxylase and carnitine acyltransferase. Now, it's important to know that carnitine acyltransferase is also known as the carnitine palmitoyl transferase. So, a, uh, CAT and CPT uh, typically are referring to the same thing. Now, citrate goes into the uh, cytosol, and that's kind of a signal that says, hey, I've got plenty of ATP because I'm leaking out into the cytosol, and so that will activate uh, ACC, and uh, it'll catalyze the last step to make melanyl-CoA. That's the committed step. Now, melanyl-CoA will feed back and inhibit uh, CPT1. Whenever you inhibit CPT1, you inhibit beta oxidation, so you're inhibiting the breakdown of fatty acids. You also have hormone regulation. So, so this picture actually puts uh, into visual the words on the last page. So you get your uh, carbohydrates high, your blood glucose is high, it raises your insulin levels. The ins high insulin levels activates phosphatase, which will activate ACC. And then your high acetyl-CoA from the glucose is going to be converted into melanyl-CoA. Melanyl-CoA will inhibit the uh, CPT1, and it will also be converted into fatty acids. On the other hand, 
uh, low blood glucose will in, uh, will signal glucagon. Glucagon will activate protein kinase A, which will inactivate ACC. And also, so low energy states such as uh, AMP protein kinase will uh, slow down uh, ACC or inactivate it. And uh, that will reduce melanin CoA, which will allow CPT1 to <clears throat> to move forward. So fatty acyl CoAs will be attached to carnitine. The carnitine will be uh, transported into the mitochondria, and the fatty uh, acyl CoA will be re uh, reformed, and it'll undergo beta oxidation, uh, creating more acetyl CoA, and uh, move through the TCA cycle. When a muscle cell is low on glycogen and glucose, it will actually oxidize fatty acids. So fatty acids undergo uh, beta oxidation. But whenever the muscle has adequate energy supply, it won't um, it won't create fatty acids. But what it will do is it will create melanin CoA through ACC2. And the only reason it's producing this melanin CoA is to inhibit beta oxidation by inhibiting the carnitine palmodyl transferase. On the other hand, when energy levels are low, signaled by AMP kinase, uh, ACC2 is um, is inhibited, and then you get the uh, uh, CPT1 uh, opening up. In addition to inhibiting ACC2, AMP kinase, so AMP kinase inhibits ACC2, but it also activates uh, a melanin CoA decarboxylase. The melanin CoA decarboxylase will convert melanin CoA to acetyl CoA, and this will further reduce melanin CoA uh, and allow CPT1 to be active, therefore transporting fatty acids and creating beta oxidation. Now remember that even though most cells may be in a low energy state and maybe the whole body as a whole is in maybe say a starvation mode and beta oxidation needs to be happening in most cells, there may be some cells that are completely high on energy and those cells will still have a high level of citrate in the cytosol. And the reason I say this is because when ACC is phosphorylated, meaning when ACC, so ACC in the phosphorylated state is considered inactive, but high enough levels of citrate can even overcome inactivated ACC and cause it to start uh, producing more melanin CoA. And this kind of illustrates how no enzyme is really ever completely off or on, but they're upregulated or downregulated. So glucagon would, for example, phosphorylate ACC. So I'll just put glucagon. And insulin would dephosphorylate. So in the liver and adipose tissue, for example, insulin would increase fatty acid synthesis uh, and decrease beta oxidation, whereas in the muscle, you'll get um, melanin CoA formed, which will decrease beta oxidation, but it won't actually go into fatty acid synthesis.